Hello again, everyone. Welcome back. Well, today is not really a review, but we are at June 30th, halfway through this year. So I thought it might be a good idea to uh, do a halftime report, if you will. I've had some, uh, uh, 64 total cigars. Can you believe that? 64 reviews so far. Some cigars have surprised me in a good way and some in a not so good way. So I just want to talk about a few of them that have impressed me, uh, a few that disappointed me, and uh, we'll run down what could be uh, considered a top 10 or so at this point. Now, with six months to go and the uh, usually new releases coming out in July and August and September and what have you, anything could change. But uh, I'm looking at my list here, and it's pretty good. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm quite pleased with it. Now, uh, every year, it seems like some company steps up or surprises me, and I find myself having a lot of their cigar. Some years, it's been AJ Fernandez. You know, whatever. But... Um, this year, it's James Brown and Black Label Trading Company, or Black Work Studio. He's the owner of both. I see on my list of higher rated cigars, a lot of theirs. And uh, out of 64, if you're in the top 10 or 15, that's pretty good. In my opinion. <clears throat> but um, let's look at a couple of them. Now, you might be wondering what I'm having here today. I'm having a uh, Viva La Vida Torpedo, one of my top rated cigars from last year. Very good cigar. Now, what I want to start out with, got to start somewhere. Let's, let's look at some cigars that disappointed me. I really thought they would be better and they wind up being way down the line. Actually, one of them is just from this past weekend. Let's just go right recent. The uh, Viaje Zombie Farmhand Andre. I really thought that was going to be a better scar than it was. And it just, just didn't deliver. I mean, I rated it in thirds. 91. Started out pretty good. 88, 87. So it wound up 88.67. That's just not going to get it. Another one that really uh, I had high ho hopes for was the uh, Hoya de Monterey Epicure Selection Toro Especial. I'm a Toro guy, torpedo guy today, but normally a tor Toro guy. And this was a six by 50. And it was another one that just didn't deliver. But its counterpart, to find the actual sheet here, the uh, Selection number one, which is a 46 ring, 5.6, rated a 91.67. So the smaller ring, in this case, won out, and it does a lot of times. A um, couple others. Uh, one other one, the Punch Knuckle Buster Toro. Again, I'm a Toro guy. That cigar just didn't do it for me either. It, I remember it being very meaty, very leathery, and not a lot of sweetness, but, uh, uh, you know, rating it, it was 91, 88, and 84 for the final third. There were some others that disappointed me, and I don't want to bore you, but um, those kind of stood out. Oh, one more, in my opinion, and I love Espinosa, but the War Zone just didn't do it for me. I, I really had extreme high hopes for that cigar. And it wound up a 92, 89, 87. The six by 50, uh, two Toro, nice size. I right in my alley, but it only rated a 89.33 with me. So if you like that cigar, I'm, I'm happy for you. It just didn't do it for me. So that's some that kind of missed the mark. And there's a lot in the middle, but let's talk about a few at the top that sort of surprised me and, Maybe didn't surprise me, but let's talk about a few at the top at this point. Now, 
Now, just a few minutes ago, I was uh, talking about a viaje that didn't hit me at all. But there were some that did. And I actually have a lot more to go this year. But the, uh, the fat jalapeno, that was a very good cigar. Um, it wound up with a 93.75 rating, but it started out at 96 for the first quarter in that particular cigar. Um, a cigar that surprised me that was very good is the Cavalier uh, Geneve three, uh, USA Exclusive Petite Corona. Very small cigar, 5x44, but very nice. Very nice chocolate flavor. Had one last night. Um, Undercrown, the uh, Maduro Corona, the Shady X, which there's a new version this year coming out that I hope to get to. Those all did look real well. Leaf by James surprised me. I don't know why, but it did. Wasn't your prototypical James Brown uh, cigar, but it's very good. It, it was just reviewed, what, I don't know, a month or so ago at the most. I was glad to see the uh, Lirio Rojo uh, 2019, this year's version, even though it says 2019. It really made a huge bounce back over last year's version. I, I didn't really, wasn't excited about last year's version. This year's very good. That's a good cigar, and you can find them out there now. The, uh, went back to Viaje, the jo uh, Skull and Bones Johnny Blaze, a big cigar, 6x56. That is a very good cigar and very hard to find now. I'm on the hunt for them, but uh, that's a very good cigar in that series. And even though I just got around to it recently, the H. Upman, 175th anniversary, 7x50 Churchill, really good cigar. I've purchased two boxes of those uh, since reviewing it. Probably one of the biggest surprises in the plus column for me this year was the Cohiba Royale Toro. After having the Spectre last year, which I did not care for, I was uh, really worried about this cigar. But once I had it, I was like, this thing is very good. Now it's very, very, very expensive, but it's very good. So if you want a celebratory cigar, it might be a good one for that. If you just want to have a blow it out, it's very good. Check out all these reviews. You'll find them on the YouTube or the blog. Um, as I said before, there are a lot of cigars by James Brown. The Santa Muerte Barrio Santo. Very good. The cigars I'm mentioning now are all like 94-ish and up. Last Rites by Atacom. The Supreme Leaf by Agonorsa Leaf. I just had one of those yesterday. Those are very good. And they're coming out with a Toro version this summer. Another by uh, Agonorsa Leaf that was a little bit of a surprise, but not really. The JFR Lunatic Torch Visionary which is the smallest of all the visionary line, I mean, of all the uh, torch uh, line, it's only six by 52. It's really good. If uh, the only thing I can do to compare it is if you like a Guardian of the Farms type flavor, you'll like this cigar. And of course, um, some other James Brown cigars at the top, the Deliverance Nocturne, uh, 2020 Perfecto. That is an excellent cigar. Bishop Blends. I reviewed the Lancero and the Robusto this year, and they both tied with scores of 96. So they will actually occupy one line on my year-end review because they're the same. That means the same score. It's basically the same cigar, different size. You don't usually find that. But these are both excellent. And at this point, the top rated cigar. Is the Isabella Time Traveler 2019. That cigar has more flavors than I can name. It has everything. 
It is an amazing cigar now. It's subject to, uh, it's lonely at the top, so uh, it's subject to uh, competition. But um, those are just some of the cigars I wanted to talk about here at the end, at the, at the, uh, end of the year. So at this point, if you wanted to see a preliminary top 10, here it is. the mid-year top 10 and things can still move around um, or there's gonna be more cigars I mean, probably at least 50 more maybe 60 so we'll see where they fall in this line but you can let me know what you think but that's where we stand at half time.